The chair is proud to recognize in attendance this evening our distinguished guests. Our honoree, the Honorable Congressman from Ohio's 7th District, Congressman David Hobson and his lovely wife, Carol. The military cast is filled with symbolism. You see a table set for a special group who cannot be with us tonight. For they have answered our nation's highest calling and have yet to return from the field of battle. They are America's prisoners of war and those missing in action. They are commonly referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them brothers and sisters. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. There is a vase holding three flowers. The red is for those who gave their lives for their country. The white is for those who return and are with us. The yellow is for those who are missing and we pray will return to us soon. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of the bitter fate of those not with us. The glasses are inverted, signifying those who cannot be here. However, in remembrance of them, we place their glasses upright as they are with us in spirit. To America's honored and beloved POWs and MIA. Chief, may I proceed? Yes, First Sergeant, you may proceed. Duty Sergeant, are you ready? Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Sergeant at Arms, step forward. The chair is proud to recognize in attendance this evening our distinguished guests. Our honoree, the Honorable Congressman from Ohio's 7th District, Congressman David Hobson and his lovely wife, Carolyn. <laughs> the members of Congressman Hobson's family and friends. First Sergeant and distinguished guests, the purpose of this occasion is to honor Congressman David Hobson by presenting him with the third award of the Ohio Order of the Musket, the highest honor bestowed on an individual by the enlisted members of the Ohio Air National Guard. Duty Sergeant, is there a citation to accompany this order? Yes, First Sergeant. Please read the citation. Congressman David Hobson, in recognition of his unparalleled parallel interest in, in support of and guidance to the non-commissioned officer corps while serving as Ohio's 7th district member of the U.S. House of Representatives, this award shall serve as notice to non-commissioned officers of the Ohio Air National Guard that he has been accepted with due honor and ceremony given this 10th day of October, 2007. Sergeant at Arms, make the presentation. He is treated like a four star, like a head of state over there because he does stuff for our military everywhere in the world. And I was never more proud to be an Ohio Guardsman and to know Congressman Dave Hobson. Through this last round, I know a lot of our wings have suffered through Brack and what uh, some other folks in DC wanted to do, but I'll tell you what, it was the power of this gentleman up here and our Adjutant General and our Assistant Adjutant General and the Governor and the Senators that went back up there and fought for your missions and fought to get you back from where we were going to be a couple years ago at two wings and some GSUs to staying at our end strength the four wings and all our GSUs and being the best of the big states in the Air National Guard and it's through his leadership and push that we're still there. So sir, tonight, this evening is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and welcome the third recipient of the Ohio a and Order of the Musket, Congressman David Hobson.
Well, there's a story behind this hat. Let me tell you the story. Uh, this last campaign, I was going door to door, and I knocked on this woman's door, and I had on the 178 hat, which I normally wear, although I was in mission, and I was also in the 123rd. Uh, but, uh, so anyway, um, I knocked on this lady's door, and she said, you got the wrong hat on. I said, what do you mean you got the wrong hat on? It's an Air National Guard hat. Wrong unit, sir. So it's in my town. She's wrong one. And and so, you know, I, I didn't do too well with her. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you her name in a minute. So I'm walking around the neighborhood and I ran into AJ knocking on AJ's door. I didn't know where AJ and Mary lived. And, and uh, just knocking on the door, I said, Boy, we have a bad experience over at uh, Carolyn. Ebert's house. <laughs> I said, she just kicked me from one end of the house to the other, all in my hat. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, you, you do. You got it, you got it. Here. And so he hands me a hat with the 121st on it. So I go back and I knock on the door and I said, am I doing better? He said, come on in. <laughs> and then she said, and then, then I had to turn around and she said, oh, I know what she did. You got AJ's hat. <laughs> I didn't realize it had AJ's name on it. <laughs> I went back over to her. But she's a great lady. She did a lot of great stuff. And uh, for all the family support people. But I thought it was a, and I, I, I talk about it. And I enjoyed um, working uh, with the military over the years. Uh, one of the neat things is that one, one, one time, I, I don't remember it was that time, when I went to Ranch and I came down into the area where the guys were working, was that that time? And I said to the whoever was in charge, I said, how do you know who's the guard and who's not the guard? He said, we don't know. He said, in the Air Force, these guys are as good as we are. Sometimes better. I think better more often than not. Our pilots always win. Our, our, all the competition we get into, Guard people win, maintenance, whatever it is. Guard people are good. They're more experienced and they do a great job. But I thought it was very interesting that he, he said to me, I don't know. He said, I can't tell the difference. You know, the uniforms are all the same. It's one of the things I complain about the Army. You can use it if you know. You can use it to tell whether the, the, uh, the, what unit they're from, whether they're reserve or guard. But one of the things we just found out this week, and one of the things we've been fighting about is the pay systems are different than the records and things of this sort. And we tried to, we found out that the healthcare is different too. And the healthcare is different when you come back, especially in the Army side. We found out they were putting guardsmen into certain places in reserve and the records were elsewhere in these holding units that they had in Washington. And unless they can come up with some really good reasons, which they couldn't in the hearing, I don't think that's the right thing to do to troops. And, and uh, we, uh, and, we, and our committee uh, has been pretty good about trying to take care of people and, and their needs. And one of the things I need to know from all of you is when there is something that's not working right, you need to let us know. The Marines that took it, I saw a Marine here, right? You know, once a Marine, always a Marine. And the Marines are, Marines are a little different, I know. But they won't, they won't come. The, 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 when the Lima Company would have people coming back, they went out to the VA Center out here, and the VA Center turned them away because they, they didn't have the DE-214. And these kids are still on active duty. And they wouldn't they wouldn't take them to try to. And the people working out there were really rude to these kids. And this went on for a couple months before I found out about it. And finally they invited me to a family support group. And I met there was one kid that was a casualty, and you know, I wanted to meet his parents and, and uh, talk to them. And I tried to go to every uh, casualty that we have uh, uh, where they made a uh, sacrifice. And uh, <clears throat> this, these, these kids, I said, funny we're talking in front of the uh, Navy guy who's the, the uh, corps and the cor corpsman came up and I started talking to him about the treatment and then finally he leveled with me and I said, oh, now I know why you invited him. Why didn't somebody come to me? He said, well, now he didn't really feel comfortable with that. This has gone on for about four months. I fixed it in four days and I had all those people either removed, they were on the front desk at the VA Center here in Columbus or sent to uh, some further education about how we should treat people and how we should treat these young heroes. And I, I, I think it's better today, and we're going to have a new VA clinic here in Columbus.
promise that's really going to be good. But I, but I, I really want to thank all of you, not only for this honor tonight, but for what you do and how you serve this country. It's not easy. It's not easy on your families, uh, who are real heroes and the support they get. Uh, you're all real heroes for what you do. You do a great job. You're easy. You're easy to step out and and, and, and help. Um, and you know you don't ask a lot. I remember uh, General Smith. We we've gone to Bosnia and Kosovo. Uh, met with uh, young people. Um, the kids are just great. Um, General Wade has, has done great things, I think, for the Guard. Um, we wouldn't have won on Springfield. This is my third time I've won on Springfield. We didn't win the way I wanted to win. I don't know if you heard this. I said on the floor of the house, I said, you know, my unit in Springfield got realigned. And I said, I know what realigned means. That means they take your airplanes. And so we set about to work to get airplanes back in Springfield. And you're going to see, well, the, we, we announced one unit already, the Dutch are coming to Springfield, bringing their own planes. Uh, there'll be some other countries in my opinion that are coming with them. Uh, and they'll, some will bring planes, but I want to provide the planes from this country for them, because I think eventually uh, Springfield will keep the same kind of flight training they have now. Uh, that was pitched to me in the beginning, I might say, as a way to be off of RAF by doing it. The flight training and uh, not have to go through RAC again. Well, that didn't work. They realigned us. They, they technically said it didn't RAC us. I think the uh, the Mansfield unit, I think, is going to come out fine. It's going to take a little more work, but everybody's working that here at Washington. And frankly, General Blum, if you don't know him, you ought to, if there's any time where you see him, you need to thank him on behalf of all guards. He is a real, he's not afraid to, to say what he thinks. Um, and he's not, and he's willing to fight for all parts of the Guard. Not just the Army, not just the Air he, he fights for everybody. And he fights for what's right. And he fights to get the right equipment. Um, he tries to fight to get the right treatment for everybody. And that's not always easy because one of the things that the regulars don't like to do is share. And uh, we found that out in this last practice because the Air Force where we thought we were a totally integrated force, we were integrated at the point that we tried to really hurt his bad. And I think we've, we've fought back on that pretty well, everybody fighting together. Um, but again, this is probably, I've been doing this job as a congressman for uh, 17 years now, the 18th the end of this term. Um, and this is probably the highest honor I've gotten. This is really, really neat. And the venue couldn't be better because I served in this building for eight years. Now, none of this was here when I was there. There were pigeons on all the windows that <laughs> open. And that building back there, where my office was, you couldn't go on the upper floor because it was all walled up, it was so bad. So it's, it's really meaningful to me uh, to have this event here. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of you because uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's not always easy uh, to be a congressman. Um, there are people who disagree with you, and sometimes you really like to tell them what you think, and sometimes you do. And uh, I went, the president went, told me when you get as old as Hobson, you can say whatever you want and get away with it. And I did the other day, and he didn't like it. Um, <laughs> and, but, uh, and neither did the vice president, but I said it anyway. But again, uh, I, I want to. Really, this, this should be an honor of all of you because of what you do. And I really want to thank you for this evening, and I want to thank you for your service. And I uh, hope you have a good evening, and I hope you don't mind my stories too much. Thank you.
Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved in the present and the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance and perseverance and justice. Traditionally, a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans, both home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott King was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving at the Brit British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space with Neil Armstrong planted on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe, and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our U.S. Air Force, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans have been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish this legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. Congressman and Mrs. Hobson, will you please move down to the area in front of the head table to receive the flag from the Honor Guard. Sir, the Honor Guard also has a framed print of the flag holding here with you. Thank you. 